now we are going to see about the morphology and life cycle of silkworm. Sericulture is an agro-based industry. It involves rearing of silkworms for the production of raw silk, which is the yarn obtained out of cocoons spun by certain species of insects. Cultivation to feed the silkworms that spin silk cocoons and reeling the cocoons to unwind the silk filament for value added advantages like processes and weaving are the major activities of sericulture. Classification of Bombex Waltonism of Bombex It is a term used to indicate the number of broods or generations of an organism in a year. The term is particularly used in sericulture, where silkworm varieties vary in this aspect. The number of breeding cycles in a year is under genetic control in many species, and they have been evolved in response to the environment. Following varieties of silkworms are found on the basis of Waltonism. Univoltine Organisms having one brood or generation per year, their larvae are of robust size and consume much more food. These producers larger sized cocoons having 200 to 300 mg shell weight. Such cocoon yields 800 to 1200 meter silk. They show diapas. By Voltaine. Organisms having two broods or two generations per year. Their larvae are comparatively of moderate size. Shell weight of the cocoon is 150 to 200 mg. They yield 600 to 800 meter silk. Multivoltine. Organisms having more than two broods or generations per year. Their larvae are comparatively of small size. Shell weight of the cocoon is 100 to 150 mg. They yield 300 to 400 meter silk. Moltonism in Bombex. The larval phases are called as instructs. They molt several times to attain pupa. Variation in the time of molting is called moltonism. Molting is the process when silkworms seized feeding becomes immobile and prepare themselves for shedding their old skin to accommodate their fast growth. Four molts takes place during the entire larval period. Following races of bombics are found on the basis of moltonism. Trimoltars their larvae molt three times in their larval period. The weight of cocoon shell ratio, the length of silk obtained from their cocoon is much less. Tetramolters. Their larvae molt four times in their larval period. The weight of cocoon shell ratio, the length of silk obtained from their cocoons is higher quality. Penta molters. Their larvae molt five times in their larval period. The weight of cocoon shell ratio, the length of silk obtained from their cocoons is of higher quality. Races of Bombix on the basis of their origin. Four races of Bombix are found on the basis of origin. Japanese races. They are uni or bivoltine. They produce a green, yellow or white colored cocoon. The larval phase is prolonged. Silk is thick, of short length and are better adapted in unfavorable conditions. They usually produce double cocoons. Chinese races. They are univoltine or bivoltine or multivoltine. Larval growth rate is high. Feeding rate is high. Cocoon is oval in shape, white or golden color, yields much longer fine silk with less diameter. European races, they are univoltine, the eggs are larger, cocoon is long or oval, 
white or yellow colored. They yield much longer silk. Larvae are with higher feeding rate. Larval phases prolonged cannot endure higher temperature and humidity. Indian races. Multivoltine takes less time to complete life cycle. Cocoon is small, elliptical, yellow or green colored and yields of considerable length. Silkworm is reared extensively in the states of Karnataka, West Bengal and Jammu and Kashmir. About 85% of the country's production is contributed by Karnataka. By rearing multivoltine hybrids of silkworm, and this activity enables the sericulturalists to harvest 5 to 6 crops a year. Jammu and Kashmir, owing to its salubrious climate during autumn and spring, is producing silk by rearing univoltine silkworms. Life cycle of bombix. Among different silkworms, bombix is only domesticated and are reared in culture rooms. Karnataka, where the temperature ranges from 16 to 31 degrees Celsius, enjoys favorable climatic conditions for rearing bomb eggs throughout the year. While in West Bengal, the multi-voltine silkworm rearing is practiced even under adverse conditions of temperature. In Jammu and Kashmir, the rearing of silkworms is practiced only during May and June. Bombix is a hollow metabolous insect. It shows four stages in its life cycle. That is egg, larva, pupa and adult. Now we are going to see about the morphology and life cycle of silkworm. Sericulture is an agro-based industry. It involves rearing of silkworms for the production of raw silk which is the yarn obtained out of cocoons spun by certain species of insects. Cultivation to feed the silkworms that spin silk cocoons and reeling the cocoons to unwind the silk filament for value added advantages like processes and weaving are the major activities of sericulture. Structure of egg. They are univoltine or bivoltine moths produce 500 to 675 eggs having 0 0.06 mg weight and 1.075 specific gravity. That is specific gravity of an egg indicates the quantity of shell relative to other components of the egg. While multivoltine moths produce 350 to 400 eggs having 0 0.5 mg weight and 1.064 specific gravity. Each egg measures 1.3 mm long, 1 mm wide and 0 0.5 mm thick. Ventral surface of the egg is convex and the dorsal side is slightly fat. It is externally covered by a thick shell or chorion that is beset with 5,000 to 10,000 pores. 
Beneath the shell, there is a fine vitellin membrane. At the anterior side of the egg, there is a fine aperture called micropyle. Nucleus occurs at the anterior side beneath occur, which occurs the yolk entered by a fine film of cytoplasm called periplasm. Larval stages Within 10 to 12 days, larva hatches from the eggs. Larval stages consist of 20 to 24 days. Body is covered with bristles. It undergoes the process of molting and become pale in color. Larval life consists of five larval stages. The larva called instrug larva. From fourth instrug onwards, sexual dimorphism becomes prominent. In male larvae, in the ventral aspect, in between eighth and ninth segments, there is white gland called Herald's gland, while in female larvae, in both 8th and 9th segments, there are two packs of Eastward's glands. Structure of 5th instrug larva Light grey colored larva whose body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. Head consists of six segments showing three packs of simple eyes, two antennae and mouth parts, one labrum, two mandibles, two maxillae and a labium. Thorax is three segmented, that is prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. Tarsal part of meso and metathorax are hump-like. Mesothorax bears a dorsal eye spot. Each thoracic segment bears a pair of legs showing coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus, which ends in claw. Abdomen is 11 segmented of which only 9 are visible because 9th, 10th, and 11th segments collectively form 9th segment. 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th abdominal segments bear packed lateral muscular projections called pseudo-legs or prolegs, which end with a circular disc containing curved hooks. Dorsal part of 8th segment bears a mid-dorsal anal horn and 9th segment bears two ventral projections called caudal legs. Three thoracic and eight abdominal segments bear packed lateral spiracles. Lost abdominal segment bears anal. Structure of silk glands. These are transformed labial glands situated on the ventrolateral sides of the midgut. The structure of the silk gland can be clearly understood in the third installed larvae, after which it becomes so tortuous, that is hardened, that the morphology of the gland becomes completely obscured. The whole gland is divided into anterior, middle and posterior portions. The anterior portion shows fine twisted ducts that unite anteriorly and open at the base of the labium through a fine needle-like spinneret. On each side of the junction of the anterior duct, there is a gland called Philippi's or Leonet's gland. Its secretion perhaps increases the luster of the silk fiber. The middle portion is the largest and thickest portion showing three fractions. The middle part leads into thin coiled posterior portions that extend up to the end of the intestine. The wall of the silk gland shows three layers, outer tunica propria, middle glandular layer and innermost tunica intima. From the posterior portion of the gland, fibroin, 
the outer layer of the silk fiber is secreted. It remains stored in the middle part of the maturation. Sericin forming the inner core of the silk fiber is secreted from the middle portion. Structure of pupa Dark brown colored body divided into head, thorax and abdomen. Head is hidden at the ventral side of the thorax and consists of two compound eyes, antennae and ill-developed mouth parts. Thorax is large with two pair of wing pads and three pairs of legs. Abdomen is 11 segmented though only nine segments are externally visible. First abdominal segments bear lateral pad spiracles. Pupae exhibit sexual dimorphism. Male pupa is smaller in size and shows a point-like structure in the ventral portion of ninth segment. Female pupa is larger in size and shows a X-shaped structure in the ventral portion of the 8th segment. Adults The adult stage completes the life cycle of bombyx. Body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. Whole body is covered with fine scales. They are 25 mm long and 50 mm in width. Head bears Bagged compound eyes, antennae, and reduced mouth parts. Thorax shows prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax. Each segment bears bagged legs. Meso and metathorax bear bagged wings. Abdominal segments bear lateral stigmata. Abdomen shows eight narrow segments in case of male and seven swollen segments in case of female. The last segment is modified to form reproductive organs. In case of males, on each side of the penis, there is a hook called herpes. In case of females, at the ventral side of seventh and eighth segments, there is genital aperture to which OV posture is attached. Genital papilla occurs in the lost abdominal segment. It is the reproductive stage where adults mate and females lay eggs. Moths are flightless and lack functional mouth parts, so are unable to consume the food or nutrition. Once the adult moth comes out of its cocoon, its only purpose is to find a member of the opposite sex and mate. Males are larger than females and more active. They flap their wings rapidly to attract the females. Within 24 hours of mating, the male moth dies, while the female lays abundant eggs, after which it dies as well. Thereon, a new silkworm life cycle begins. Thank you.